Without further ado, our first semi-finalist hailing from Helsinki, or rather from Finland, from Turku. He took out RX from Spain. Please, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming to the stage, Nazim! Nazim, last time you stood here, you were understandably nervous. How are the nerves doing now? Uh, it's well better. I feel much more confident and I think I'm gonna manage this. I hope you do manage. Now, you are already guaranteed leaving here with 1,000 euros. How does that make you feel? Amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Not bad for a Saturday afternoon. Now, standing in your way is somebody hailing from Helsinki. I'll get that right. And on their journey here did take out none other than Clash with Ash from Boston. So please, one more time, show some love, make some noise for Steroidy69. <laughs> Steroidy, how are you feeling? Relaxed, ready? Uh, well, pretty relaxed, because I want 1K, so I'm, I'm good. Already got 1K, don't even have to let me say, that is good news. How do you feel about your opponent? Um, well, I guess he's a good opponent, and I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. No need for words. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Torku Helsinki semi-final. Gentlemen, please, come here, shake hands. It is about the fun, about the sportsmanship, but of course, these guys are taking their step, their first step. One of the two will be your first finalist of the day. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a round of applause. You have been fantastic throughout, and two guys that are definitely fantastic are our commentary team. So, over to you, boys. Thank you very much, Sean. We are finally at this point. Four players left in the tournament with 200. And to be honest, it's been underdog after underdog, just turning up and winning. I mean, a lot of 3 zeros and 3 ones, very dominant performances all round. But this match coming up, which I'm really excited about, was the fact that Nazim, just to remind some of you guys at home, Nazim was basically the bottom seed. Yes. Uh, the lowest, he, he was eighth place. You know, he only just got there. His opponents, ninth and tenth underneath him, one trophy, two trophies, just separating them. I mean, this guy <laughs> scraped through, yet turns up and then wins 3 0. But gave us a, a phenomenal first set. And again, Ster uh, Steroidy manages that. Uh, came up against Clash with Ash, you know, one of the YouTubers that, that made the trip over here and, you know, use, using his deck, which I actually think is really well crafted. Now, as you can see, his favorite card is the Mortar. There are differing opinions on this unit, but. Steroidy uses it very well. One of the Mortar's biggest weaknesses is that it can't target units right next to it. So what does Steroidy do? He puts a Tesla tower right next to it, so that can sort of deal with the shortcomings. There's always going to be an element of strategy, you know, whether people agree with cards or not, or whether they like them that much. The reality is, there's a lot of variety in the game, and there is scope for counters. I mean, even when we saw him fight Clash Clash, Clash he was really onto something in that final game where he went for the, the huts, you know, uh, the spawners that would constantly pump out these units that wouldn't damage the opponent's tower. It only served the purpose to constantly distract the enemy mortar. Now, here's the thing. This kind of tournament setting, a lot of these guys are not very familiar with. So these things about understanding an opponent going, I know that my opponent is going to use a mortar deck. So do I go straight in with constantly going for distracting units? Or does he try what worked for him in the original game and no counter pick is necessary? Now, last time we saw Nazim play earlier today, it was, it was, a, lot of, it was a lot of counter play. That's what we saw the most. Uh, it was just an, an incredible amount of just waiting for his opponent to make a move. And then he had uh, counters ready. He's already going in for this goblin hut. And uh, we see the mortar go straight down from Steroidy, but the, I think it is Misses gonna... completely wow. because of the speed on those goblins. Fantastic play. I love the idea that he's actually gone for the goblin hat instead. Just to outspeed that mortar. And immediately, you can tell that Nazim has done his homework. Yeah, Nazim really. is 100% ready for this mortar. He has the building, the cheaper building in the goblin hut to, to distract the mortar from shooting his towers. And he's got the lightning ready as well to deal serious damage to the mortar. I don't think the mortar's going to do much at all in this game. Okay, so, and just like that, he has the lightning ready to go. So he waits for the goblin barrel to appear and then go straight in. Fantastic play right there as well. You see the skeletons are going to split off. Skeletons not too much of a threat by themselves. They do die in one hit to the towers, but again, uh, Nazim's got this defense going up uh, again against this mortar. We see the Tesla tower and an Inferno tower. So many buildings coming out from Steroidy right now. That's a lot of vulcation right there, I mean, and it's just going to act as one giant distraction. The question is, is the bomb going to reach the target? 
Ooh, just like that, wow. taking out the mortar, which is definitely the threat in this situation. Well, if it's a question of Tesla Tower, Mortar, Inferno Tower, the Mortar every day of the week is the one that you want to get rid of first, especially if it's in range to damage your own buildings. And there, straight in with the rocket, it really is no surprise that he has a rocket available to go. And I love the way that he's gone by this deck. Now, Steroidi's been playing this really well. However, how many of those rockets is Nazim going to have on deck to literally, if he's going to play for the one tower, and he's already done that much damage to Steroidi's tower, I mean, who's going to take the first one, you know? It depends. I mean, this, he's, pl he's playing for this extremely defensive set of cards. But right now, it's not really working out for him. But Nazim is actually playing this really clever. He is just, This deck is built to counter the mortar. He has the building to distract it. He has the rocket to do guaranteed building damage. All he's doing is stalling out. Defeating the mortar, defeating the Tesla towers, get rid of the mortar, and then bam, his rockets are going to do all the damage he needs. He doesn't need to push, he just needs to destroy the mortar so he can do rocket damage. That is going to be two Teslas back to back. Now the mortar is probably going to target one of those things. Nice Goblin Hut just to go behind the enemy lines. That's going to be good damage, but even better reservation of that lightning spell. Ready with those reactions just in case. See a bit of a stalemate going on. Again, the Goblin Hut's going to take a mortar shot. Going to take one more shot. No, it does destroy itself. I think it'll be a, a clean shot on the Princess at least. I think what's out on the field right now is literally the, the epitome of what story he's been doing. You have all of these buildings ready to go. And it's just, it's hard to just penetrate that kind of defense. But I mean, the question is, has, has Nazim got a rocket on deck and is he saving it? But the problem is, it's a lot of elixir and he hasn't got a lot available right now. But we are down to 10 seconds left. This 900 health tower on the right steroidy is in a little bit of trouble, especially considering he's done so little damage to Nazim's building. Nazim's been saving a lot of elixir, just so I can say that. Going in for a push, the question is, what's going to accompany this giant skeleton? I mean, th there's no way the giant skeleton's going to get through, but he's just soaking up all this damage. The, oh, the Tesla tower's down, the minion's going to go down. Oh, Goblin Barrel goes through! Secret Goblin damage. Barrel, how much damage? Has he been saving the lightning? Yes, he has! Great reactions there, ready to go. And the princess is just going to sit pretty right there, chipping away at that of those giant buildings there. Take it out once again. The mortar is distracted because once again, Nazim has saved the spawner unit there just to get through the mortar. Now the minions do manage to get through, but they are quite low. We can see this barbarian hut's going to do a really good job of just distracting all this stuff. Uh, it's just, it's pure distractions. Nothing steroidy has is getting past this middle point. That tower's looking pretty delicious for a rocket right now. I mean, let's not be around the bush. This giant, if this giant skeleton gets a good push, all he has to do is get through. Golden Barrels once again. Has he been saving the lightning? Yes, he has. Good really defense. smart play. I mean, again, the, the barrel's doing damage on an impact. It's doing some unavoidable damage, but he's managing to save himself from a lot of goblin damage. But again, this this, this princess again, but the mortal's got through there the rocket. There we go. How much damage is it going to do? Oh, 100 left. All he needs to do is get one final thing. Nice use of the arrows right there. 11 oh, no. hit points left. Anything from range will do at this point. Fantastic gameplay. Now, that was close. The Roydy had a lightning available. There was a question of who manages to get this spell off first to take out that first objective. And the team manages to clutch it out once again with that last, last little and bit of damage. he is sitting there cool as a cucumber. Look at that. Hey, man, he's ready for this win. He knows he's gone. OK, my opponent's using mortars. I need a deck going into this tournament that deals with that. And this is that deck. It's the perfect counter. But there's always the chance that when we had these kind of preliminary group stages where everyone played everyone for an hour and a half, like, there's always the chance that when it really turns up, people are like, oh, I don't really expect this guy to have such a strong defensive more deck. Going into the semi-finals where or everyone here has the chance to study their opponent. I mean, there is no way that Nazim didn't study up on this guy and went, how can I craft a deck during this downtime that will just completely get around the fact that this guy obviously loves mortars? But if you main, let, let's say, I'm not, I'm not sure what you would call it, but let's say you main the mortar deck. Let's say that's, that really is your, your go-to deck. Your go-to thing is, I, I, I play the mortar and I craft my deck around this card. That is going to have a direct counter in what we're seeing from Nazim. But... This is now up to Steroidy to make the adjustment, to go, okay, this isn't going to work. It was a close game. He almost got through, but that was more uh, down to Nazim making a, a slight mistake at the end and dealing with the mortar. Didn't get his building off in time. The mortar did target his tower before he got his building out. But is Steroidy going to change, or is he just going to rely on another mistake? I guess we just have to wait and see. There's no way to know. If, and that's the thing about we, we are currently using uh, the new Spectator mode, which will be available uh, in a free update coming up. Uh, so obviously we're using the Spectator mode right now, but one of the things is we cannot see the card in the opponent's hand. So we, that we, opens we up can, for a lot of speculation. We can see the cards they've played in this match, and we can see their entire deck once they've played everything in that deck in the match, but we cannot see what's in their hand or cards they haven't played. So you guys and girls at home watching are just as in the uh, in the, uh, you know, sort of in the, uh, well, I guess mystery as we are. 
Now you can see there's, the there's uh, some buildings put up almost immediately, and that's one of the benefits of this Tesla Tower is that it's kind of hard. It, it only does out damage when there is something in its vicinity, right? So it can actually kind of sit there pretty, um, sitting quite safe. Now, what we saw in the last game was the fact that almost immediately Nazim has gone, yes, obviously stick with his deck, but he's going to stick to this idea of just constantly going for the squad units. Now, Steroidy has been quite reluctant to go for a Morty. He might not necessarily have one. Has gone for the Hog Rider. I do you believe this is the first time we've seen him go for this deck? Now, this I think we, we may have seen Steroidy completely uh, abandon this mortar deck. I'm not sure uh, how much being, uh, his old deck was purely crafted for the mortar, we can see. But I mean, I bet we just we haven't seen a mortar this game yet from him. That's one of the smart plays that we tend to do. Already going in, the skeleton is distracted. Now, that's one of the combinations. And again, saving that lightning spell every single time, remembering that he has a Goblin Barrel ready to go. So, I mean, there's no reason you, you, you would change that instant piece of damage. Really smart there from Stroidy just to keep that card in line, ready to go. But I really like this, uh, this adjustment to the Hog Rider, because we've actually seen the Hog Rider make a lot more uh, of an impact in today's tournament than we have seen the Mortar. So the Hog Rider definitely a, a tried and true uh, force to be reckoned with today. Nazim got a lot of mileage out of that Hog Rider as well, though, in his, in his original set of the uh, quarterfinals, so he's going to be familiar with that card. Oh no, a bit of a waste on the lightning by Nazim. Tries to finish off the Tesla Tower, but it will die naturally. So a bit of a waste of Elixir, unfortunately. Odd Rider's going to go straight and try to get out. I'm not sure if that was a freeze. Nice once again. That's a really good combination, that freeze and the Hog Rider. Going straight, going to get some of that poke. Down fence of the Princess, going to get one shot. He's going to get at least one hit right there. Kind of shaving that tower, not doing too much damage. So now, but once again, like, like a sport, we're using this new uh, spectator mode, this observer mode. We have seen Storidi has played every card in his current deck. No more to be seen. He's completely abandoned it. I like that play. I mean, trying to show that he has other things ready to go. Um, and also the fact that he can change deck when Azim is locked into a deck that is entirely built to counter mortar. Oh, the fireball is going to... Wow, it's going to hit both the hut and the tower for a nice amount of damage. But we can see this this spawner tactic from Nazim. He's got a goblin hut and a barbarian hut. Hog Rider goes down, but he's going to go straight for the... No, it's going to go straight for the tower. It's going to cleanly get through. This could be a dead tower on the left if we don't see retaliation. There's a lot of push going in right now. Going in with the freeze just for good measure. Oh, wow. And he gets a very crucial rocket. The goblin, but I don't think it's goblin. enough! Single goblin running straight in there. Getting that secret little hit to take out that first tower. It's already a great situation. Has he saved the lightning? That's the question. Yes, yes, he had once again. I mean, I would be very surprised if we ever catch him without that lightning ready to go. And just for that situation, not overcommitting, saving the lightning, keeping his elixir ready, and he can just play on that one tower. Looking really good for Steroidy right now. Oh, 80 health left, didn't do enough damage. Hog Rider goes down. That was a good game from Steroidy. That was clutch. I like the adjustment. I really like the adjustment showing that it's not all about... I mean, yeah, he's got a water deck ready to go, but right there you can see he played every single card in this deck. That lone and there goblin, was no <laughs> That lone goblin He just needed himself. one more, didn't he? He just needed one more troop uh, just to get taken out. But that goblin going to sneak in there and do a cheeky little backstab on that tower, taking out that last little bit of health. That was, that was no play. backstab. That was... He was brash, went straight up to him and went, all right, mate, let's go. You and me building, and the goblin won. Now, the question is, in this situation, I mean, I... What once again, I would be very surprised if we don't see some kind of switch. Uh, because Nazim went straight in there and understanding that, you know, uh, Sorority was going to go for a mortar deck. Um, and then that's kind of the thing about this tournament saying where we're playing first to three games where the option to counterpick the opponent, you know, for those of you that may not understand the whole idea of counterpicking, it's taking the time out to look at what you've lost to. And this actually applies to loads of games. Looking at what you lost to and having the luxury, having lost that next game, to change something up to give yourself a little bit more of an advantage. You know, that's what happens when you lose games and there's no exception. That, that, that's why game one in a set, while even though you've got potentially, you know, extra games behind you, let's, no, let's, let's not forget, they are playing first to three. So best of five set first to three. So, winning that first match, even though you've got all those games behind you, gives you the luxury of being able to be the first one uh, to counterpick, should you lose beyond that. So we can see a very defensive start here from both players. No one's overcommitted to anything. Sometimes we can see potentially you know, early Hog Riders and stuff. But for the most part, these guys will just sit there speaking of early Hog Riders. He's going to have to go and unfortunately does actually commit to just having the uh, Ice Blizzard on the right-hand side. Double freeze right there. Oh, wow, they froze each other. Wow, really, really uh, interesting stuff. Hog Rider is going to lose. Now, that was the important thing. The Hog Rider had to die. That was why the freeze was put down. Because, okay, if this Hog Rider is let loose, my tower is in serious trouble. Darku's going to run in completely get taken out by that minion unit right there. A bit of a mirror match on the left-hand side. Getting the lightning just to get a little bit of damage on the tower. Now, oh, nice stuff. One low minion. That really isn't going to do anything. It's going to get shot yeah, one by the tower. And see you later. Farewell.
Okay, so we have gone back to this kind of uh, defensive situation. The, both guys opting to kind of save up some elixir and maybe wait for what the other guy's going to do or save up for some kind of big push. Well, let's see what they've already played. We can see both of them have uh, the standard goblins, both of them have the minions, but they have a little bit of differences. We can see the first Tesla tower deployed from Steroidy. Uh, Defi seems to favor this building, it seems. It's definitely an effective building, just kind of sitting there pretty in the front. Hog Rider running in right as the Valkyrie gets spawned. And I like the defense there, waiting for the Inferno unit. Once again, that's the strength of the Inferno Tower, is that it's single damage and extremely high burst. So these uh, slightly high hit points, but single damage, high damage targets will get melted by the Inferno Tower. I mean, just look at that. It does so much damage. Yes, it does passively lose life over time, but still, just the fact that it's there, it's distracting the big uh, the big units, and it's doing so much damage to them before it dies itself. Both players going to use lose their buildings at this point. I like the idea. Just poking out there with the poison just to get a little bit of damage there on those barbarians to kind of sort of quell their offense just a little bit. Takes all the barbarians down to about half, but there's a lot, a lot of units going through. The minions are going to be deployed to defense. The lightning is good. Does serious damage to the tower, but the barbarians get through the freeze. The barbarians are going through. Big damage. Wow, this tower is going down, getting chunked. Lost at least about four to That is a really good amount of poke right there, especially now we have 60 seconds left on the clock. The question is, what's the next play? Double, uh, double Elixir has been activated, but there's 60 seconds left on the clock, so uh, a lot of scope for aggressive and very fast-paced play. Speaking of aggressive, we have a Hog Rider paired out with a couple of goblins. Good to go. That's going to do quick damage right there. So that you're going to completely ignore them. The Hog Rider's going to run up behind. This could be it. Good use on the freeze, double freeze once again. Shades of the beginning of the game. Rears its head. Oh, the Hog Rider gets one last hit of 355 health. Now that one lone left. hit might be crucial, depending on what comes next. Hog Rider gets through, three defense left. It's going to go. Oh wow, two towers. That Hog Rider isn't going anywhere, but Hog Rider on the left going to go through. They're trying to distract it. Getting oh, one wow, cheeky hit again. once again. One more hit from Hog Rider is all it's going to take. Goblins are going to run through. That's not going to do any damage. That's that dangerous. Point. Steroidy has access to lightning. We don't know if it's in his hand, but 99 health. He just needs to chip that away. Nice positioning there, the Barbarians. Here comes the Valkyrie, here comes the Fireball! Great play right there! Stroidy's gonna take that tower, and once again, move on into the next game after once again stealing that final tower right before the time finish. Also, very, very impressive play. Stroidy showing he doesn't need the Mortar to win. That he, it isn't a crutch, it's his favorite, sure, but he doesn't need it. He has counters ready if you are ready to defeat it. Now, here's the situation. I mean, if you win one more game when you're two games up, that's the difference between 1,000 euros and 10,000. I mean, if you win this, you go into the grand finals to play where you get at least 3,000 euros. But if you win, you take home everything. The, it's a very top-heavy payout. Let's not forget that. I mean, these, these guys, they're, they're, they're playing really cool right now. I know there was a lot of nerves at the start of the day. They do seem to have cleared up somewhat. I guess the, the players are just getting a bit more comfortable, but... They were playing for 1,000 euros before. The winner of this goes home with 3,000. So a 2,000 euro difference between losing this and winning it. Second to first is 7,000. I want to see how they play when there is 7,000 euros separating them. All the cappers of the Twitch chat. Shout out to the Twitch chat. Love to see it. Now, the thing is, in this situation, I mean, a lot. I've said this earlier on, but a lot of these guys, this is kind of their first tournament situation. So they're playing for so much money, and the pressure really is on at this point. When you get put in a situation where one game could potentially send you home and cost you a lot of money, what do you do? Do you keep it cool? Do you manage to, you know, do you actually choke it out? Who knows? But right now, both these players, I think, are being very calm and collective. They do seem a lot more comfortable now than they did at the start of the tournament series. I'm, I'm just happy to see this. I mean, 200 came together today. Uh, lots of new faces, lots of unfamiliar faces, but what united all of them was just a love for the game and just finding it genuinely a fun experience. But now they're playing for big cash and they've, they've, they've managed to get themselves down to top four out of 200 of some of the best players in the world. Now, is Nazim going to be able to pull this one through and tighten that knot, bringing it one game a piece away from winning? Or is Steroidy going to take this 3-1 and move into Grand Finals? We'll have to wait and see. Going in for the Hog Rider once again. I mean, it's a very powerful unit. One of the most, if not the most popu popular unit of this tournament so far. Yeah, there you see the minion horde go down. Icewind's going to try and take him out, but it is going to get destroyed. I don't see these minions doing much. The Valkyrie is good. I mean, let's but... not forget the strength of the Valkyrie. I mean, it's not necessarily against the minion group because they are airborne, but her ability to uh, attack in a circle around her, uh, taking up multiple units. Here comes the Lone Hog Rider once again. Good patience on the Inferno Tower to just distract that unit and take him out easily. Now, that really is the make or break we're seeing. If you've got a building ready to distract the Hog Rider, you're okay. But if you get caught without it, that's when you start taking some serious damage. We've seen people get caught without without it before and it's done a big chunk of damage and in many cases they have been quite deciding factors that hog rider push with the you know, the troops behind that will just dish out the damage and act as good distractions i mean it just hasn't stopped really has it 
Now uh, see uh, Nazim setting up a push again with the Ice Wizard, but we see the Goblins to the left. Not quite sure how much damage they'll do by themselves. Maybe just a distraction. Not quite sure what that was about. Sometimes it might, be, it might be a way to potentially bait out arrows to see maybe Nazim has some arrows good to go. Maybe it's just clearing the unit uh, and just making some space. But going on the Ice Wizard is going to get one hit, is going to get one lone hit. But unfortunately, going to get erased very quickly with that minion army. But and man the, uh, manages tower. to chip down a little further. He's doing a little bit of damage infrequently to the tower, but slowly but surely it is going to add up. And when we, especially when it's coming from a hog rider, or oh, they go straight away. We've got a hog rider and barbarians. That's going to the left. a chunky offense right there. They're going to go and try and take out those minions. Nice freeze just to pause those units right there. Very crucial, the fact that he had a Hog Rider and some chunky Barbarians running along with him. Great use of the Breeze just to stop that offense dead in its tracks. That was really good. Minions are going to go down. The Valkyrie manages to take out the tower, but again, uh, Steroid is going to keep himself in this game. Going to take them out before they do any tower damage. Obviously, if Tesla Tower go down again, this is where things are going to get crucial. Double Elixir, 60 seconds left before we go into Sudden Death, and it's going to decide one tower could send either of these guys into a bad situation. Oh, Hog Rider goes in close, goes straight past the Barbarians. The poison's good. I like the idea of accompanying him with the poison, going in with the freeze as well. Good defense. That's going to do a good chunk of damage right there. And it's going to even things out quite nicely on both towers. Now, Nazim is sitting in a good oh, situation. Good Inferno Tower to distract the Hog Rider, otherwise, that push would have been for nothing. Going to slowly but surely take away some damage from both of them. Left Tower sitting at 1300 for Nazim, is doing a good job of just chipping this down. Inferno Tower is still there, so he's going to save himself from a push for at least a little while. Steroides definitely on the back foot right now. He has a lot more work to do, but once again, one good push, one crucial little mistake could decide everything. Battle ends in 10 seconds. We probably are definitely going to go into overtime. Nice use of the poison just to quell those offensive units. That's going to do good damage to basically all of them. Barricade is going to run in there and do some good circle damage around as well. Now, I, I, feel like, I feel like the poison was a great choice because look at the amount of damage that did. He managed to get max poison damage on multiple targets. Here comes the Hog Rider running in, but the test tower is going to use up. Oh, nice freeze! freeze. Once again, that tried and past? tested combination of the freeze and the Hog Rider, but both players using their freeze. So once again, we're going to find ourselves at a stalemate. So freezing on reaction to your opponent's freeze truly is a way to go, no, this freeze isn't going to work. My freeze won't do much, but at least it's going to stop you from getting anything off it. It's just a complete definition of a stalemate. Good use the Inferno Tower once again. That's going to do good damage once again, these guys are doing very similar plays to one another. I mean, that pairing of the goblins with the Hog Rider, I mean, it does so much work. The question is, time. is the Hog Rider going to take out this tower before he dies? He's going to run straight through. He is going to go down. He's going to save himself some damage, but we see this wizard doing AoE damage. This Ice Mage doing huge damage to these barbarians. I don't think they're going to get to him before he manages to kill them, especially with the Valkyrie behind him. I really want to know what this final unit is. This already has good to go. We're yet to see it, but Nazim has played every single ounce of his cards, and as you can see, hasn't got a fireball, hasn't got a okay, rocket. He has I to push. I was about to say, he hasn't used this final card. It's either a rocket or a fireball. So big damage man. He's going to try and stall. I like the idea. Stalling with the lightning to potentially build that final piece of elixir to get that freeze on deck. He's still going to get some poke and is still in a bad situation. But I think that freeze was everything. Now that was good damage. Considering Nazim is still sitting pretty at max health on his towers, he is in no danger here. But if Steroidy can at least manage to last a minute and 40 seconds, even if he manages to get some tower down or but keep his towers alive, he might manage to make this game a draw. Here comes the Tesla Tower. That is, once again, going to act as a good distraction. He just has to stall for a minute and a half. Good use of the Barbarians as well, but she is, the Valkyrie is going to take out a good amount of damage because, again, she attacks in an area now, around her. Now, I thought that may have been a preemptive freeze from Nazim because he now doesn't have it. And a Hog Rider's There's in There's no freeze and a Hog Rider charging on the left-hand side. Wrecking Crew coming in on the left-hand side, trying to do as much tower damage as possible. Good defense on the Poison. That's going to do big damage to every unit going in. Okay, so the Poison moves used defensively that time. Nazim manages to keep his tower alive. 1,700 health, still a 1,000 health lead on Steroidy's left tower. But if Steroidy can hold out for 60 more seconds, he might be able to make this game a draw and keep things the way they are. Nazim just needs one good push. I mean, a couple of decent strikes from the Hog Unit and that 710 da da damage tower. Oh, we'll get the sentence out eventually. It is going to go straight out of there. Now, Hog is going to be dead. There's the freeze to stop it from taking too much damage, but the tower itself, the Tesla Tower, going to take things out. The poison, good. Going to do some chip damage on all these units. The Goblins go down. Tesla Tower might go down to it. Tower's taking a lot of damage too. Barbarian's taken, but there's the Hog Rider, but the Inferno Tower again. So ready. But he is going to go in, freezing the Inferno Tower, reserving a good amount of health. But once again, I do think the Hog Rider is going to get taken out before he goes in. And again, we have the AoE damage of the Ice Mage. Counter oh, attack. Hog Rider goes left. The freeze has been used, but there's a Tesla Tower again to distract the Hog Rider. The Goblins, that freeze is good. Going to take out the Tesla Tower. If he can get this tower and get one more hit on this tower, he has a who might take it out? Through. Who knows? He isn't going to get a crucial hit. This is going to go down to five seconds. In this situation, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be good because the thing is, Nazim does not have any now. specific range damage that he can just put on a tower. In that situation, if he had a fireball, if he had a rocket, especially if he had a rocket in that situation, I mean, that's what Steroidy was doing in those preliminary games, right? Saving his rocket for the final moment.
Now, and they the, didn't have true, the true heartbreaking moment at the end of that game was if, if Nazim's Hog Rider got one hit, one hit on that left tower, the poison would have been enough to finish it off. That was so close. But Sorority manages to play from the back foot literally all game and managed to draw it out to a draw. And now they're back at square one. It was an interesting style of play. We, I mean, it, it, it's no mystery right now that Storodi has a very defensive style. I mean, some people will opt to build for giant pushes, some people will opt to build for tower defense. Now, the fact that what these guys did, they actually had a very, very similar metagame to each other where it was all, a, all about the Hog Rider. That, However, that they both almost looked like set one of yeah, the top eight. for sure, absolutely. Because the thing is, in that situation, they both had some kind of decent health uh, building that could just that save it, you know, that literally just save it when the Hog Rider comes in. But the fact that they both had freeze means that they can both use the same kind of attack. But at the same time, if you know you have to use your freeze, the second one player uses their freeze for an attack, the other player literally just use the freeze in the exact same situation and just put it down at a neutral state once again. So what we saw there was, uh, I think Nazim was was playing better for chipping out the, the tower, but because they had such a similar style of play, it wasn't enough to clutch out one of the wins. But what I like about this deck, and this is purely observation, so correct me if I'm wrong, um, but both of them have the Hog Rider, which is the really the, the core of their pushes, but then at the same time, they both have counters to the Hog Rider built into their deck to get ready for what they try and do well, to... Well, one had big... Tesla Tower, one had Inferno Tower, right? I mean, it's the same kind of fundamental play, but it's just a slightly different unit. So they're taking their time going into this next game. I mean, with so much money separating them, I can't really blame them. Looks like we are going to go straight into what is, is this game five? <laughs> at this point, I mean, we had we did what have a, game a draw. So I mean, at, at this, at this situation, Azim is still two games down, and Sorority still needs to just win one game. So he has opted to go straight back in. Now, was that a bluff? Was that a? I don't like the fact that you've got a spawner because I've gone back to a mortar deck. It's just like that, of course he has. Okay, so giving away that he's a little bit unhappy. Straight in with a rocket as well. These guys waste no time on getting that damage. So the fact that Nazim already has a spawner and Nazim already has a rocket, Steroidy has already played his mortar as well. So these guys have gone into this knowing exactly what the fundamental play is. Now, if you guys uh, and girls at home have just joined us, uh, Steroidy did use this deck against Nazim in the first match of this set. But unfortunately, it didn't go his way. Nazim was ready. Uh, the core of Steroidy's deck really is that mortar, that big range damage. And Nazim knew Steroidy was going to use that. So his deck is built to counter that. They just faked each other out. They had the opportunity to change decks. They this went, was okay. definitely a, a matter of prediction. Yes. You know, predicting, not even like within the game itself, it was predicting what deck the opponent is going to choose in this first to three setting. Looks like Nazim did manage to get the read. He did predict that Steroidy was going to go back to this mortar deck, so he did get his counter ready. Goblin's going to get a little bit of damage, some big damage adding up to that left tower. Let's, let's not forget the rocket itself and the arrows and the goblin barrel. So much guaranteed range damage. This may necessarily be a repeat of the first game we saw where what was going on was Nazim had a deck that was built around countering the mortar and just out sustaining. That's what the rocket is for, so that he can sit defensive and nullify the mortar with the single units, but constantly poke away at least one tower with the rocket. And as I can say, the rocket Sorority also going in with the rocket of his own. Both players now are going to have to be very careful with how defensively they play. Not going to do as much damage to uh, Nazim's tower as Sorority is currently suffering. See, the skeletons are good, but then again, skeletons not going to do too much damage. They do die in uh, basically one hit from the tower, so they're not as good by themselves. Mainly just a deterrent, I think, to stop units from attacking and getting close. This is that make or break situation again. 60 seconds left, doing good damage, just chipping away. A couple more of those. Nazim is going to be in a good situation, and once again, there's so so many single units and talking about big damage going straight in with the giant skeleton. What is the follow up? There is a princess behind who's going to churn out damage and damage that more from a distance. Once again, going straight in with another goblin hut going in. Has he got the arrows ready to go? Managed to at least take out the princess, but we see a steroidy uh, actually doesn't have access to the lightning, which was his sort of go to counter for the goblin barrel. He doesn't have that, so the goblins are going to do a lot more damage in the barrel than they did in the first match. Especially if you accidentally miss time, that arrow takes a little bit less time. Speaking of lightning, Nazim has got lightning good to go. I, I really don't see steroidy managing to come back from this. The lightning was core to countering that goblin barrel right now. So much guaranteed damage. Uh, I don't think steroidy's going to really be able to get some serious damage on this tower in the 10 seconds to go. Right, this oh, there's a rocket! How much rocket. damage? gonna get going straight here, 401 oh, straight wow. into that! Three seconds left, that rocket unfortunately, it's not gonna do much at all, Nazim brings it back! This is our first situation now, of this tournament where it's come down to the final game. Now we mentioned in this set, counter pick it. Nazim is in a strange situation now. He managed to make the read, he changed his deck after the draw because he predicted that Steroidy was gonna go back to this mortar deck. He is now locked in, um, I, I guess unless they draw possibly, he's now basically locked in for this next game. 
to use this spawner. But once again, what we saw there was a deck that was built around countering the mortar just in case Steroidy called that bluff and went straight back to his original deck. Nazim's read on that was extremely correct. However, they're, oh, they're, cheering, cheering, him the on. Crowd they're cheering him on. But in this situation, we know that when Steroidy made the change, he won very comfortably. There is one game left. Does Steroidy go back to what he won with originally to counter the counter? Or does Nazim remember it, make a couple of notes, and try and put it through? I mean, there's so many things going on right there now. There is so much more to this game than you might think. This is a lot more than just taking out three towers, let me tell you. I mean, this I, I said it earlier on, but the best of three setting where you can counter pick, you can think about things, you can think about how the guy's going to build the deck. It's not just the game, it's outside the game. You have to read your opponent his reads. I mean, you have to read his reads. N Nazim did make a really good read in that game by going, I think you're going to go back to the mortar deck, so I'm going to go straight back into the counter. He could have been wrong. He could have been wrong in that game, but he wasn't. However, now, it's pretty much has definitely confirmed the deck. You can see his hand is shaking. This guy is very nervous. So this is potentially the last game of the set, unless they draw, but the question is, what is the going to do here? We see the Tesla Tower, but he did have that in his other deck as well with the Hog Rider. Very hard to tell what kind of deck Stroidy's built right now. I mean, I don't think he's gone for the Mortar. I really don't. And he's gone straight back into the Hog Rider. I do think he's gone straight back to the deck that won before. So the Giant Skeleton going to do a good job of soaking up all this damage. Hog Rider going to take some serious damage from the towers. Hog Rider might get through, but it depends on what the has got. And there's the Rocket. Wow, that was defensively. an expensive defense right there. That's six Elixir just to counter any damage from Hog Rider. But again, I think he's trying to go for the game plan of just waiting out the clock, playing to sudden death, and then using some kind of large damage target to just get that one tower. Nazim's left tower taking a little bit of damage. I mean, not, we are a minute into the game right now, and only down about 350 life, so it might not seem too bad now, but we'll see how that seems a little bit later on in the match. But we know almost immediately there's two different spawners, a giant skeleton and a rocket, and a good fiber once there. So we know, again, that playing defensively might be slightly harder for Steroidy than it is for Nazim, because Nazim has higher single target damage with those spells. That was a really good lightning, though, just to do some serious damage. I mean, again, he's already managed to stick a couple hundred up and almost even things up just on that alone. Going in for that little minion army right there, just to handle the barbarians going straight in. The princess going to take out good damage. I mean, the good AoE damage. Oh, right there. there's the freeze. The Rudy's going to take out this barbarian. The princess, wow, has managed to be saved. Nazim's clutch arrows to keep her in the game. She's That's very low on health. Sending good data to Stroidy right now, though. Understanding that he also has arrows good to go, so he's going to be able to plan his next advance very carefully. Here come the goblins. I mean, they're not going to do a huge amount of damage by themselves, but they are going to shave off just a couple of little bits yeah, of hit points right there. Couple of hundred, there. couple of hundred, that's not so bad. I mean, just a little bit surely, a couple of hundred damage here and there is going to do it. Now, whoever wins this game moves on to Grand Finals. There's a minute left until we double the Elixir. This is a very nerve-wracking situation for both of these players. There you find the Elixir has literally just been doubled. It's a minute until overtime. We see the Hog Rider going to do some damage to the Barbarian Hut, but the Hog Rider might not manage to get through this time. I think that was really good placement by Nazim to keep the Hog Rider off, and the Barbarian Hut again to keep things in. Putting the Barbarian Hut next to his weakest tower, very good call, going to do good damage to every single unit right there. The skeleton, the giant skeleton is very unlikely to reach that tower, especially with so much range. Oh, but do I speak too soon? Using the lightning to shut down oh, any the of that defense. The, minions, the minions managed to fly out of the range. Oh, a few of them will get taken out. Sayonara, you are gone. The minions will definitely get taken out by the tower, but will the Barbarians get through? Princess is good, the Hog Rider, big this push. is a big push right now, oh, using the rocket, rocket, saving it, good situation right there, it's going to do good damage anyway, but once again, saving that rocket for that situation, here comes the push with the giant skeleton, this could be the push oh, that Steroidy. moves Nazim through into grand finals, this amazing aggression by Steroidy, but just keeping calm and collected as Nazim keeps himself in, the goblin barrel safe till the last minute, going to chuck on the left, I don't think so, there's nothing to defend, the goblin's going oh, straight no. in for the lightning right there, and that was that tried and tested combination of the giant skeleton and the goblin barrels, getting good damage, but here comes sudden death, one more tower is going to decide who moves on oh into Grand Finals. God. What a game we have, finishing into maybe going into our first Grand Finals. So close, left tower weak on both of them. They're really going to pull something magical out of the end. Princess is making her way down. Double the spawner. I mean, that's a lot of pokes. She uh -oh. has to handle that immediately. Good use of the fireball. I agree with that. Just get rid of the danger immediately. Giant skeleton is good. Uh -oh. At least soak up. Well, at this point, if Storidi's got the Hog Rider, Barbarians are down. Does the Hog Rider follow? Now let's not forget as well, Nazim has got a rocket. If he gets oh, a good no damage, damage good use, here we go, this could be it! 500 health to go on the left, but Steroidy hasn't used his Hog Rider in a while, I'm sure he's got it ready. And we also know that Nazim might have a rocket ready to go just to put on that piece of pressure, but I like the fact that he's not spending it too aggressively just in case we see this Hog Rider push. There's the freeze, I was going to call it! They're already ready for it, but the Hog Rider actually is getting pushed around, the Goblin Barrel is good, this Hog Rider is no, but the Lightning takes them out. This Princess is so is close! 
The oh. princess, princess is going to do some damage if Steroidy's not ready to counter. 531 on Steroidy, 546, 546 on Azim. Here comes a big push. Minion <gasps> army in the Hog Rider. Here we go. This could be it. Oh no, the Hog Rider is looking and he is going to take the tower. Oh, oh no, 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 just yet. The rockets to go in with their fireball. He's going to take out that tower. What a fantastic play there from Steroidy. Going straight in. He's going to move on into Grand Finals. What is up with Steroidy saving all of these spells in the, just the nick of time? He is so on the back foot all the time, <laughs> but he, he doesn't lose it. He doesn't throw these cards away. He keeps them for a rainy day, and it always rains, and he is always ready. He is your first Grand Finalist, guaranteeing himself 3,000 euros minimum. How many of these ridiculous plays are we going to see? It's all coming from Steroidy as well. Huge props to Nazim though. Absolutely phenomenal play. Probably uh, the best set we've had so far today. That was the set of the tournament. Can we just get no a round question. of applause, guys, for these guys bringing it out today? 200 of them came and these made top four, but 3-2. Wow. I mean, and one went down to a draw. So, I mean, it was more than that.